The Constitutional Convention, a Historical Humans production. On May 25th, 1787, the Constitutional Convention began. The convention was intended to revise the states and systems of government under the original Articles of Confederation. It took place in the old Pennsylvania State House, which is now known as Independence Hall in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Many assumed that the purpose of the convention was to discuss and draft improvements to the existing Articles of Confederation and would not have agreed to participate otherwise. Once the convention began, however, most of the delegates, though not all, came to agree in general terms that the goal would be a new system of government, not simply a revised version of the Articles of Confederation. The most contentious disputes involved the legislature, specifically the composition and election procedures for the Senate as the upper legislative house of a bicameral Congress, and whether proportional representation was to be defined by a state's geography or by its population. The role of the executive was also hotly debated, including the key issues of whether to divide the executive power among three people or vest the power in a single chief executive to be called the president. They also discussed how a president would be elected, the length of the presidential term, and the number of allowable terms, along with what offenses should be considered impeachable, and whether or not judges should be chosen by the legislature or the executive. Finally, slavery was also a contentious issue, with the delegates debating the insertion of the Fugitive Slave Clause, whether to allow the abolition of the slave trade, and whether slaves were to be counted in proportional representation. Most of the time during the convention was spent deciding these issues. Several broad outlines were proposed and debated, mainly the Virginia Plan, which was suggested by James Madison, and the New Jersey Plan, which was suggested by William Patterson. The New Jersey Plan was a plan that called for a single house legislature where each state would receive one vote. The New Jersey Plan, advocated for equal representation in the national legislature regardless of the size of the state's population in order to ensure that smaller states still had a voice in the government. Whereas the Virginia plan wanted a legislature which state received representation in proportion to the size of their population. Supporters of the New Jersey plan advocated for states to retain power over the national government while supporters of the Virginia plan wanted the national government to legislate for the states and even veto laws passed by state legislatures. The supporters of the New Jersey plan believed that states were best suited to represent the needs of the citizen, while supporters of the Virginia plan believed that effective representation could happen at the national level. The Virginia plan advocated for more powers for central government. Larger states like Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania supported the plan. Meanwhile, smaller states opposed it, arguing that every state should have equal representation regardless of its size. The Virginia Plan argued for two branches of the Legislative Congress, the Senate and the House of Representatives. Under this new bicameral legislature, representation would be based on a state's overall size or its quotas of contribution, i.e. the amount of taxes given. In addition, House members would be elected by the people while the House would choose senators nominated from state legislators. Despite both plans having legitimate arguments for either side, on June 19, 1787, the New Jersey plan was rejected, with the majority of votes going towards the Virginia plan. Because of this, many of the smaller states threatened to withdraw from the Union, as Connecticut was the one state that sat divided between the two, particularly surrounding the representation given to all states. An agreement was established known as the Connecticut Compromise. Also known as the Compromise of 1787, the Connecticut Compromise was an agreement that ultimately reached between the two parties. In the Compromise, the bicameral legislative structure was retained from the Virginia Plan, though it established that the House would be chosen by popular vote, whereas the Senate would stay as a one-vote-per-state policy. Unbeknownst to the smaller states and the proponents of the New Jersey Plan, while well, it was agreed that the Senate members would only receive one vote per state because the Virginia plan was largely agreed upon earlier. This included senators having longer terms than state legislators, and consequently, the senators would have much more freedom and independence than was initially considered during those against the Virginia plan. 
After several more issues were debated and resolved, the Committee of Style produced the final version in early September. It was voted on by the delegates, inscribed on parchment with the engraving for printing, and signed by 39 of the 55 delegates on September 17, 1787. The completed proposed constitution was then released to the public and to begin debate and ratification process. There was also significant debate as to whether or not slavery was to be regulated, to the point where several southern states outright refused to join the Union if slavery was not allowed. A compromise was eventually reached as Congress would have the power to ban the international slave trade, but not for another 20 years, which would be until 1808. In exchange for this concession, the federal government's power to regulate foreign commerce would be strengthened by provisions that allowed for the taxation of slave trades in the international market and that reduced the requirement of, for passage of navigation acts from two-thirds majorities for both houses of Congress to simple majorities. Another contentious slavery-related question was whether slaves would be counted as part of the population in determining representation of the states in Congress, or would instead be considered property and as such not considered for purposes of representation. Delegates from states with a large population of slaves argued that slaves should be considered persons in determining representation, but as property if the new government were to levy taxes on the states on the basis of population. Delegates from states where slavery had become rare argued that slaves should be included in taxation but not in determining representation. Finally, Delegate James Wilson proposed the Three-Fifths Compromise. This was eventually adopted by the convention. Fifty-five delegates attended the session of the Constitutional Convention and are considered framers of the Constitution, although only 39 of the delegates actually signed. The states had originally appointed 70 representatives to the convention, but a number of the appointees did not accept or could not attend, leaving 55 who ultimately crafted the Constitution. Almost all 55 of the framers had taken part in the revolution, with at least 29 having served in the Continental Forces, most in positions of command. All but two or three had served in colonial or state governments during their career. The vast majority, around 75% of the delegates, were or had been members of the Confederation Congress, and many had been members of the Continental Congress before the revolution. Several had been state governors. Only two delegates, Roger Sherman and Robert Morris, would sign all three of the nation's founding documents, the Declaration of Independence, the Articles of Confederation, and the Constitution. If you enjoyed watching a video like this and would like to see more content from us, be sure to hit subscribe down below and leave a like. And if you want to see a different topic, be sure to comment down below what you would like to see and follow us on our socials. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next week.